649, welcome back to the Valley. Today we are taking a live look. You can see work going on in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, near the site of that Amtrak train crash earlier this week that has now left eight people dead. We do have new information for you this morning. The NTSB says the engineer at the controls of the train has agreed to speak to investigators, unsure yet exactly when he will do that. His lawyer has said that he is having memory problems since the crash. Now, federal agents do say that data reveals 65 seconds before the crash, when the train should have been slowing down, it sped up, going from 70 to more than 100 miles per hour. Again, as we mentioned, an eighth victim was found at the crash site yesterday. Police believe that everyone who was on the train is now accounted for. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. Now 10 minutes before 7 o'clock and we're starting our non-stop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we're following breaking news for you this Friday morning. The U.S. military helicopter missing in Nepal since Tuesday has been located on the steep slopes of a mountain east of Kathmandu. Yeah, a Nepali Army helicopter spotted the crash site early this morning. Now on board that missing helicopter, six U.S. Marines and two Nepalese soldiers Nepal's de defense secretary says crews have found several bodies at the crash site. Now, the helicopter's pilot had reported a fuel problem just before it disappeared on Tuesday. The crew was part of a major relief effort that included several helicopters from the U.S. They were hauling in supplies to communities devastated by two major earthquakes just in the past three weeks. Police in northern Minnesota are investigating the shooting deaths of two men. Police found two men in a house near Walker, Minnesota Tuesday. One was dead, the other was airlifted to Fargo where he died. The Ramsey County, County Medical Examiner is, Examiner is conducting autopsy and toxicology tests. Police have identified the man whose body was found in a pond in Mandan, North Dakota on Wednesday. He was 30-year-old Justin Garou of Bismarck. Police say he was just released from the Burley County Detention Center on a drug charge two weeks ago. They say there was no trauma to his body. They're waiting for an autopsy report to determine how he died. 651, weather and traffic on the ones. Getting started with meteorologist Mick Kerr and uh, people about to head out the door, about to run into a whole lot of fog. Great, so uh, this is not the most current uh, picture from uh, the Jamestown DOT cam, but a uh, little foggy there. Ditto up around the uh, Pembina border crossing, a little haze and whatnot, and same thing in uh, down around uh, Foreman. All right, the planner for the day includes the breaking up of the clouds starting in the northern end of the valley. All cloudy, all foggy and misty this morning in the southern end of the valley, but even some fog and mist reported up in northwestern Minnesota. Keeping our fingers crossed that we're going to the mid-60s and we'll see some sunshine this afternoon. Key word there, some. Maybe a lot more in the north than in the south. Oftentimes it's just hard to get rid of the clouds to scour the sky of cloudiness following the long-term rain that we've had. And it just might be that issue today. But I hope we get some sunshine. Uh, by uh, overnight tonight, we'll start to see some thunderstorms move into south-central North Dakota, though. Well, maybe breaking up the clouds a little bit around Breckenridge, but the cloud line, actually, stretches now from western Cavalier County through Towner into B Benson and uh, in the county into central North Dakota. Here's that line of thunderstorms that are moving northward. They'll be headed into the valley here coming up in the uh, next 24 to 36 hours. A severe weather outbreak likely tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. And as always, uh, the Valley News Live Storm Team will keep you updated and keep you informed online on your phone and, of course, right here on the air. It's 46 and cloudy in Grand Forks, and yes, it's foggy in Fargo with drizzle and mist and 50. Time for a traffic report now from Al Ahmed. Fog is definitely the travel story of the morning. No two ways about that, Mick. Uh, but it's very spotty. Now, I just got uh, north of Interstate 29, or Interstate 94, rather, and uh, the visibility is a little bit better here again. Traffic is really thick on I-29, and I do mean thick, particularly northbound. Westbound I-94, pretty heavy as well. Travel speeds off just a little bit this morning in that 55 to 60 rate. Drive carefully today. Make sure you have those lights on, Al Ahmed. Valley today traffic. Just hit 654 on this Friday morning. Another heads up to drivers. A busy North Fargo Road is going to be shut down today so crews can do some concrete work. Elm Street between 14th and 15th Avenues North. That's the dip right by El Zago Golf Course. 
Going to be closed from 9 a.m. until noon. Workers are pouring concrete for a new lift station project that is part of the El Zago Flood Management Project. And a heads up for Monday, 15th Avenue North in Moorhead near the 700 block will be closed for up to 60 days for flood mitigation work. During that time, traffic will be detoured to 13th Avenue North. Drivers are encouraged to find different routes to avoid congestion. It's Friday, and that means time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Sebastian Thorovich is wanted for felony criminal conspiracy. Call police if you have any idea as to where he is. Statewide testing for Minnesota students will resume today after cyber attacks and software glitches stopped it two days this week. The testing vendor for Minnesota's comprehensive assessment, which has a $33 million contract with the state, says its website is fixed, though they don't know yet who has been trying to hack them. Now, some Minnesota educators say that this year's software has been nothing short of terrible and plenty irritating. School districts around the state have until Tuesday to complete their statewide testing. Legislative leaders and Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton have reached an agreement on at least two areas of state government spending, higher education and public safety spending. The deal will increase money for state universities and colleges by more than $160 million and funding for public safety and courts by more than $110 million. But there are key, several key bills awaiting passage, including the tax bill, and lawmakers only have until Monday to get their work done in a regular session. The legislature must also pass budget before July 1st in order to avoid a partial state government shutdown. A big congratulations to the NDSU softball team. They beat Fresno State 4-zip yesterday in the NCAA tournament out in Oregon. That moves them into this afternoon's matchup against host school Oregon. Now the Bison, or excuse me, Oregon I should say, the number two overall seed and Pac-12 champs. But hey, the Bison have been knocking off big teams all year. And in case you missed it, they are now ranked in the top 25 in women's college softball for this season. A great season for them. And hey, it's double elimination, so anything can happen. So even if they uh, lose today, they've still got another chance. And they've been a great team all year. Fun, fun to see, fun to watch. Tomorrow is the annual Heart Walk at the Shields Arena in Fargo, which makes for a great place to start taking care of your health. The Valley Today's Christy Larson has been live there all morning with someone who really knows the troubles that can come with heart disease. Christy? Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. That's right. I'm here with survivor Don Nicholson, and Don knows the importance of getting those heart screenings, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm 61 years old, and I had never had a heart screen before. So I wanted to just see what my heart was doing. So I went in one morning, uh, January 16th, and I just found out that I had a large CAT scan score, you know, which is uh, a lot of calcium around the arteries and everything and a lot of plaque. And I don't know, I must have been worried about it all weekend or something like that. And Sunday night, my wife brought me in the ER and I just never left till I had quadruple bypass. And you have, you know, done very well since then. Like you said, I mean, you had the quadruple bypass, and now you are back to walking three miles a day. And I know you're going to share your story tomorrow morning. Is that why you want people to come out so that they don't go through what you went through? Yes, exactly. Because if I could save a couple of lives by not, you know, by just people going through the heart screen and just knowing what their body is doing, that would be the, the best thing. Because I had no symptoms going in not one symptom, and then it wound up being almost the most tragic thing you could have. And well, we're very fortunate to have you here with us, and I know that you're going to be sharing your story more tomorrow. You can also read more on his story online on RedRiverValleyHeartWalk.org. We do have that link on the hot button. But tomorrow, activities start at 9 a.m. here at Shields Arena, and the ceremony starts at 10. Should be a great weekend, lots of fun. And you know, even if the uh, weather doesn't cooperate tomorrow morning, keep an eye on that, but uh, still a lot of events going on for sure. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you, Christy. Before we go this morning, I just quickly wanted to say thank you to everyone at NDSCS and Wapaton for welcoming me back to campus last night. You I, were allowed back? I, well, they, I snuck in, but then they let me stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> they invited me down. I actually was able to 
speak to the students and family last night at the NDSES Student Recognition and Awards Banquet. I was honored to be able to celebrate incredibly talented and driven students. Uh, there I am with uh, Harvey Link, the VP of the Academic and Student Affairs, and Brad Barth with the Alumni Foundation. Uh, they surprised me by digging up some old yearbook pictures, which were <laughs> kind of scary. And I told everyone, you know, that's not so bad. Thank goodness Facebook was not around back then because then I'd really be embarrassed. But I had a great time. It's always nice to go back uh, to NDSES. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook this morning. The average person does this every 17 months. Get a new cell phone. Sounds about right. You can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page. Seems like a new one comes out every two months. Yeah. So you got to stay up But to then date. there's the 24 month contract. Right. So. All right. A quick check of our uh, forecast includes fog, clouds, and mist this morning. Into the 60s, we're going to go. We do have some clouds up north and temperatures near 50. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather for you in just 25 minutes. Have a great Friday and great weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday morning.